Hi there. We are back in the kitchen. Today we're at the studio, and today River's with me. Ooh, you first time. Yes. I'm excited. You recognize River from schooling around. I hope so. And yes, <laughs> which is you've done a really good job with that. Thank you. I appreciate I'm that. Really I have made a it your really, own. Really, really good time doing it. Genuinely. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. Well, it shows. Um, we're going to get started on some stuff, and then we're going to talk a bit about mm. what's you know going on in the world right now. I've got some bacon browning, primarily because I need the sauce or the bacon grease. Mm. So we're going to do something today, um, you know, with the uh, pandemic occurring, people are a little worried about food and such. Understandably. So um, I, what I did was I reached in my pantry and pulled out some stuff, and then I went to Meyer yesterday to see what was left and what I could do with what was there. Mm. So I came up with pork chops, Brussels sprouts, garbanzo mm. beans pita pockets, and we're going to make a sandwich out of all this. Yep. And it'd be easy, and it's something you can get the kids involved with, so you don't mm. have to be out doing it yourself. Yeah. All right, so I've got some nice hot bacon grease there. First thing I'm going to do is I have reached in my freezer. Last time berries were on sale. Oh, scallops. Mm -hmm. That's sweet. Yep. Very sweet. I'm not going to put anything in. I'm just going to let them sit there and warm up for a little bit of a touch of dessert afterwards. The bacon is cooked, so I can move it. Kyle loves it when I get down off camera. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to follow. Yes. I think he's just used to me disappearing. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got some pork. And I'm going to get that on here. Sounds get, good. Get it sizzling. Oh, you got to get the sizzle. Yeah. Got to love the sizzle. <laughs> there we go. Get some of that started. And then what I'm going to do once that gets going, then I'm going to throw the Brussels sprouts in to crisp up a bit, too. Good. Now, you said you don't like Brussels sprouts. I didn't say I don't like them. I just, uh, I don't eat them. I just, it doesn't end up on the table very often. <laughs> well, I take I, what I get. I don't really like them, but I li dislike them less than I used to. Mm. How's that? Um, Chris loves them. Larissa loves them. So I've started making them more, and I serve them at a lot of dinners and such. And I've ha I had a chef say, that's the way I'm going to make Brussels sprouts in my restaurant from now mm -hmm. on, because we cooked them in bacon grease. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go too far wrong when you cook them with bacon grease. Yeah. So I'm just going to put some salt and pepper on the pork. There we go. And just excuse me, just for the mm -hmm. heck of it. Now on the plate in front there, all we did was put together some appetizers for us. Yeah. Um, it's just, again, I grabbed what was there, wheat Ritz crackers. And in the fridge I had some cream cheese and some preserves. And I even grabbed some preserves out of the fridge here. So put those together to have a little snack. So it's always good to have something to nibble on while you're cooking, especially if you have kids around. Yeah. So I just put some Dijon on here. No big deal. It's going to let that brown up some, and then we're going to slice it up. Oh, you're doing a fine job with the Brussels sprouts. Oh, thank you. I, gotta, I have some variation in sizes. Wasn't sure exactly, I like so that. I have I, some smaller. I'm not big on the knife cuts. Everything has to be so exact. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're experimenting today. Yeah. You know, this is... Uh, same people at home will go through the same process. You know what? Usually I put garbanzo beans in the oven and broil them with seasoning. Mm -hmm. But why not, uh, why not try it? I'll throw them on the cast iron skillet. Why not? And we'll mix them in. There, there you go. It's another odd thing I had. Yeah, experimenting. It's good to teach to your kids. It is. I know. And I do nothing but experiment. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes it turns out great and sometimes, well, just don't ever do that again. But for the most part, it turns out great. So we're kind of, I mean, everybody's aware that things are going on and with the virus and such. So if people are making adjustments, some businesses are closing, more things are going to be done on, over the phone and such. Yeah. Kind of adjusting the way we're doing things here a little bit, too, for that same reason. Mm -hmm. So how is now schools are closed? Yes. Schools are closed, um, library is closed, uh, universities are closed. Um, it's hard to see a lot of things that aren't closed. Even private, um, pri privately ran sports are closed. Oh, um, are they? All those seasons are done. Uh, obviously, the MHSAA canceled all of their seasons. Well, actually, they technically use the term postponed. So well, that's we, what I wondered. Is there going to be a chance to... Yeah, we might see a return to it. Um, okay. As of right now, we're looking at, uh, I think... Three weeks for most things. Looks like everything is taking a good three-week hiatus. Um, I think a lot of the message too is that people are, or organizations are trying to prepare themselves, you know, in case it did get worse. Yeah. Well, and really, just it, it's being aware mm -hmm. more than anything. Anybody that's at risk that has, uh, you don't have to cut anymore. 
We're okay. good for right now. I don't All have right. any more room in the pan. All right. Um, I mean, everybody knows this. You don't need to me, me to repeat it. You know, just common sense. Um, we're standing closer than socially allowed right now, but that is true. But we discussed it and gave each other permission, so yeah. we're good. Plus, we've got all sorts of heat here, mm -hmm. and I understand this thing. This virus doesn't like heat. Oh, I don't Another know. Another reason to Haven't spend some time in the kitchen: either <laughs> go out in the sun or be around heat, because it doesn't like that. There we go. We're getting a nice little yeah. start on there. I've got more pork. I just didn't make it all up. And you're cooking then the honey mustard? Yeah, no, I put some Dijon on it. Okay, just, oh, okay. Gotcha. Just to give it a little extra moisture because mm. we're cooking it fast. Yeah. So now, what is this going to do as far as your program? So uh, actually not a lot is going to change. Um, I have, uh, a good, thankfully, a good couple weeks of content piled up, which is thanks to um, some really great parents that are able to help bring stories to me. Uh, right now, I, you know, big shout out to uh, Miss Martha Myers. She's been helping me uh, as well as some other parents and students. So really the thing that helps is I, I can always find stories, but if parents and students bring stories to me, I know they mean a lot more. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's always, that's always a good feeling is knowing that someone already wants to see it even before I do it. Um, but content will still be coming out. Uh, we have the break competition, which should be going out about the same time as this. That's always a um, great thing. Yep, that's going to be a really great one. Uh, I actually had to expand the episode so that I could include more time of it because I just got some really good footage. There's some really good footage. Oh, that's good. Um, if you want to learn how to do breaks, I bet if you watch the, the video, you could learn <laughs> just from watching it. Well, and Dan's a great teacher. Oh, yeah. He really Excellent inspires. Mm -hmm. And he's one of those teachers like that I firmly believe in. Not everybody needs to go to college. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we do need mechanics, and we do need people yeah. in the trades yeah. and everything. And Dan makes that not only respectable, but fun. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they come away with valuable skills there. Exactly. I know a lot of those young men that have graduated that program over the years have gone on to mm -hmm. careers in mechanics. Yeah. And, and right now you can pretty much yeah. set your price. That's the, that's the important part, is that they're l learning these really, really great career skills, mm -hmm. uh, which is incredible anytime you can learn uh, career skills in high school that are actually going to uh, translate the second you graduate. Oh, yeah. Um, but also, I noticed there were a lot of students who were genuinely just happy to be learning a useful skill. Mm -hmm. um, I think just about every student expects themselves to be a car owner uh, in the future, <laughs> so... Or, or are is already so yeah. you know they were only for the competition's sake they were only working on one style of breaks but right. uh, Go ahead, like you said like you said uh, Dan is a great teacher um, and he taught them on, on all different kinds of breaks so they they do learn a lot more just outside of the oh, ones yeah. they're learning for the break but that it is that uh, that hands-on training and the facility is so oh, incredible. Is, I know it's it's a professional garage. Yeah, it is. It, it is a very professional car, a garage. I think when I was there for the competition, they had seven different cars that were up. Oh, I can believe uh, it. And that is crazy because they could have students on all different uh, units working on them, and they also had another setup uh, that was off of the cars. So really, just an outstanding facility. Oh, yeah. A lot of people came out to help in time. There was an alumni that came out to help as timers. Uh, principal and the superintendent were also out um, to help as timers. It was just a really great community feeling. Oh, right good. and early in the morning, too. Yeah. 9 to 11, I believe, is what it was. Yeah. I went over with Chris one time when he was covering something for Dan. I was talking to some of the guys that were working in there. Mm. And the one guy said, oh, man, this is so much better than computers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, don't they have computers in the car? He said, well, yeah, but it's not just sitting. And he says, yeah. you know, I'm, look, he says, look, I get my hands dirty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the students were putting in a lot of work and a lot of effort, and they were working in these duos, so it was awesome to see the teamwork um, as well as the competition. I actually strapped, uh, for the first time, at least for me here at OCTV, I, I strapped a GoPro to the heads of some of the students oh, while so they really did them. Oh, you really got under the hoods so, and everything yeah, else. Yeah, really got up close and personal. But I also noticed during my footage, they kept it on, you know, in between, and they would walk around to the other students, and they were checking up on the other students, seeing how they were doing, strategizing. There was a lot of strategizing. There was a lot of times in between their actual challenges that they were figuring out the best way to go about it, discussing. Teamwork. They were learning on the spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's an ever-changing process. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. just fixing cars is an ever-changing process. Oh, yeah. um, just to update you here, I threw a little bit of butter in here with the berries just to give them a little bit of moisture. Put some black pepper on the garbanzo beans and some fig drizzle, I think, mm -hmm. on yeah. the Brussels sprouts. And pork is yeah, cooking. Yeah, the fig glaze. That's nice. Yeah, oh, it's... It's awful. That's what I use that on my uh, bacon dates, too. Mm -hmm. My daughter calls them crack. 
Yeah, I've had to modify that recipe many times in order to make it more portable and quickly served. Mm because it's kind of hard when you're in the beginning of an event to stand in front of the broiler and watch it. Yeah. yeah. So, but these are cooking through nice. Now, this is an interesting thing about pork. A lot of people stay away from pork. They don't know how to cook it. Mm. When I was growing up, pork was gray. You had mm. to cook it till it was gray. And that's when you knew it was done. And it was also dead and lifeless and, and horrible. Mm. <laughs> My mother made a lot of pork chops. <laughs> Nowadays, the way the pork is raised and processed and such, mm -hmm. you can actually cook to a pink. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be gray anymore. Interesting. Yeah, it is, it's been that evolution. Well, I'm old. Yeah. It's been that evolution. <laughs> you know. Don't say so, that. Well, I mean, I, I'm not complaining. I just had well, a birthday. Well, just not in front of the camera. No, the, the <laughs> camera knows I'm old. I just had my 62nd birthday last week, and I'm very proud of that, so it's not a problem. But yeah, that's, it's funny how even things like food have evolved. Mm -hmm. Because you've got to think about 20, 30, 40 years ago how things were grown and processed. You go back even further and you get it even cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, in the 50s and 60s, you had the industrialization of food and processing and everything mm. else, and things changed. And there, there were a lot of problems with pork. Yeah, you know, low if you standards. didn't cook it pro properly, they had, there was a, a worm issue. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's all evolved. Mm. So pork is good. Don't stay away yeah. from pork. <laughs> but like I said, when I went into Meyer yesterday, no chicken, very little beef. Very little fish, um, but they had pork, mm -hmm. so I got I got that, and I got the Brussels sprouts. Jerry, we have cheese and crackers over here. Yes. Smelling <laughs> that pork. Call me. <laughs> the pork is browning in a little bit of bacon fat, and a little bit of Dijon, mm. just to give it a little bit of zip. But help yourself. Okay, what's on the cracker? That one's fig, mm -hmm. and the other one is oh. currant. Yes, a little bit of sour cream as well. Mm. Would you put sour cream in there? Cream or, or cream cheese, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we're talking about the schools right now, obviously, and food, luckily, or maybe not, like, fortunately enough, um, the schools are working very hard to produce meals for the students. They've already got it um, all set up and yep, started today. Yep, and uh, if you guys aren't keeping up, go to Facebook and check out uh, Charter Township of Oxford has a lot of information, and even if there's information in other places, does a really good job of getting it to and that, it's so that updated. way you have it all in one area. Um, but they they are working very hard to do that. But this is obviously filling another need, uh, which is both keeping your kids busy mm -hmm. and uh, reaching the back of the, the fridge as well. Yeah, exactly. Which is great. You never know what you're going to do. I reached in and into my pantry and I pulled out. I didn't even look. Sweet French dressing. Mm. Honest to God, don't even know why I have it. <laughs> but and I'm thinking back, I did something with pork with this one mm -hmm. time, and I bought extra because it was 10 for 10. Mm -hmm. Gotta love 10 for 10. <laughs> Honey mustard, you know, different things mm -hmm. that you just grab and use up. So, you know, and ask your kids to do it. Ask them to reach. You never yeah. know what combination they're going to come up with that's mm -hmm. going to be just great. Yeah. So the whole idea is whatever you have to do, you're going to be together a lot. So have some fun with it. Yeah. So we're going to continue sautéing a bit. When we come back, we're going to put together some sandwiches. Great. And we're going to slice some tomatoes. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Hi, I'm Smokey Cole Bear. Filling in, because for 75 years, Smokey only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. Meanwhile, the song was wrong. We did start the fire. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Catch us anytime on YouTube. Go to Oxford Community Television YouTube. cooking here is almost ready mm -hmm. and the whole idea here is whatever your circumstances whether you're working from home or the kids are out of school whatever it is you're gonna have more together time yep. right now we're having some nice weather I was just out in the park yeah. there's people on the tennis courts yeah. in kids kingdom somebody rode through on a bike so if we've got decent weather take advantage yeah. of it right here is Seymour Lake Township Park oh yeah, yeah. come oh, here there's a, a ton of kids out 
Um, they're playing basketball. They're playing different sports. The playground is really nice. Yeah, um, and the Pollyann Trail, you know. And yeah. here's the thing. If you go out on the Pollyann Trail right now, Grab one of those white Meyer bags, stick it in your pocket, mm -hmm. take the kids out, and if you see trash, pick it up. Oh yes, because it's oh, that time. Would be incredible. And, and, and the the teams are starting to get yeah. out there. But if you're out there walking, why not enjoy it? And of yeah. course, always pick up after your dog. Yeah. Not like the person last week who picked up after their dog, <laughs> bagged it, and then left it on my driveway. <laughs> I don't understand that, but anyway, it's right, in so the bag I, for you to pick up. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Well, I think. Yeah. There we go. And. I'm gonna cut that up, whichever knife you like, into smaller, smaller pieces. And then we're gonna put together some sandwiches. Smaller than this? No, it, yeah, smaller than that, yeah, because okay. you won't have to bite it. You're gonna eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and our berries are bubbling away, and all I'm gonna do with the berries is drop them in a dessert shell, because then you get a little bit of cake type thing, you get a little bit of fruit. So I would take them off the heat, except that I can't, short of shutting this thing off, which I think I'll do. So, you know, even though we're, well, I guess we're not limited in what we can and can't do, we are, but it's going to be different things. We can't go to the library. Legacy Center, I guess, is still open. They've got special programs, at least that was as of last night. I don't know. Check it out for yourself. Yeah, you remember anything that we say yeah, to check and verify, to because when you see this and when we're saying it, yeah. Information is changing incredibly rapidly. It is. Um, things can change literally overnight. Yeah. So. And if you, if you go to the grocery store, buy just what you need. First of all, think about how long it'll last. I saw a picture of a lady with 12 gallons of milk in her cart. <laughs> I mean, I drink a lot of milk, but come on. I can't, I can't do that. So think about it. Think about your neighbors. Another thing that came up yesterday when Chris was working on all the information at the township, because, yes, he worked all weekend, is... People were asking about older folks, homebound, and that sort of thing. What if they can't get out to free meals or to, to older persons commission mm. or whatever? If you know someone who is perhaps elderly or has an illness or something, you already know them, so you can help them. You can give them a call or stop by. You can pick up some groceries for them. It's not up to everyone else. It's up to all of us. Yeah. Okay, so the township especially is, is really leading the way in the various organizations, but we, are, we all live here. Mm. Whatever, I mean, this isn't just Oxford. <laughs> So, and we go out to several other communities, and I'm sure you're taking steps just like we are, but do that. If you're aware of someone, like we had actually had someone respond to Chris yesterday complaining as though the government was supposed to step in for these people, and his answer was very politely put, but it was, well, if you already know about them, you can help them. So that's what we do. Um, some programs, you really just, anything you want to do, you need to check on a regular basis to see what's still going on. Yep. Because we just don't know. Yeah. But we will get through this, and nice, especially when we get nice weather, that helps. Yeah. We're not out there slogging through a foot of snow. Yeah, that would be bad. So we finished up the pork with, like I said, just a touch of the Dijon, which is pretty much cooked off. I threw some garbanzo beans in here. We've got some Brussels sprouts. We've got some cheese, some tomatoes, some crunchy things, fig and walnut crunchy things. And this whole meal, this would probably, if we did, you know, if I did a full meal, meal, dinner for four or five people, probably about eight bucks, if that. So that's something to think about. So buy pork, don't be afraid of it. This pork, I thought it was boneless. I opened it up to wash it, it wasn't, so I just trimmed the bone off. I've still got great pork to work with. Mm. And you're doing a fine job of cutting Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I think the, the key here is improvising, right? That's, always. That's what we're which trying is, to... Which is what I always do in the kitchen anyway. Mm. I had another idea, and I don't know if I'm gonna have the space or time to do it. But there was a severe bread shortage, so I bought a loaf of just Meyer split top wheat. Now, you know I love to make grilled cheese sandwiches. Uh, I was going to do it today, but we're going to run out of time. I'm just going to tell you. I was going to spread it with cream cheese and preserves mm -hmm. and butter on the outside and then some peanut butter mm -hmm. and then toast it. That tastes good, right? Mm -hmm. No. Then cut it into odd-shaped pieces and serve it to your kids as a puzzle that they have to put back together before they can eat it. Mm -hmm. That would appeal to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would, definitely. I remember when I was really younger, I always got, I always got the triangle cut. You oh, had yeah? You had to get the triangle cut. Because if you didn't, it just didn't, it didn't feel right. Like, the vertical cut wasn't for me. Eating it whole with the bread, with the crust off wasn't for me. But the triangle, you get just the right area to bite into. It mattered. It really did. You know, I had some friends over to play cards a couple weeks ago, and I made some of my griddle sandwiches, which involve a whole bunch of stuff. And you're right, everybody had preference mm -hmm. as to how it was cut. Yeah. I'm like, really? Okay. To each his own. 
But uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you some more pork to chop up here. Anyway. All right. So, but that's what we do in Connie's Kitchen anyway. And I just thought in light of this, um, other than, like I said, pulling a few oddballs out of my pantry, I wanted to go to the store and see what was there. Um, I knew Brussels sprouts would be there. And they were. And uh, just, you know, we're just going to have, if, if things go, and frankly, if people continue to shop like crazy people, mm -hmm. we're going to have to work with what's there. Yeah. And I'm not going to give up fresh food. I mean, the freezer cases are empty. There mm -hmm. was, there's a rush on ice cream. Yeah. Don't understand it. But I will adjust. I'm not a big fan of Brussels sprouts, but I'm going to make them in such a way that I'm going to enjoy them too. Because mm -hmm. I do not want to give up my fresh produce and my fresh meats. Mm -hmm. Just maybe a little bit different. Yeah. So, and who knows, by the end of when this is all said and done, <clears throat> we'll have new recipes. Yeah. We'll People have discovered new things that we like the taste of that we never knew before. And uh, I think ultimately we'll also be a lot stronger as a community. I hope so. And that's, I, I think, You know a what, good I, I have mentioned that people have been panic buying in that. I've also seen a lot, a lot of really good things. Oh, yes. People oh, reaching yeah. out immediately, mm -hmm. sharing what supplies they have. Yep. This is what I did yesterday at Meyer. They brought out a pallet of toilet paper. I just had to. So I bought two packages. And Chris said, well, we don't need it. And I said, you know what? But somebody might, and this way I'll have it for them. Right. So now I've announced the fact that I have two packages of toilet ah. paper. But Come if, running. It, if it comes to that, um, we want to just keep going the way we go. We want to keep our free meal program going. I, I don't know what shape that's going to take. We served last week. Mm -hmm. um, some of the programs are going to carry out only. We don't want to lose our community. Mm -hmm. And our guests don't either. Yeah. Um, but then we're not due to serve again until April, so we'll see where things are then. Yeah, yeah, and a lot will change. By oh, then. yeah. Hopefully it'll be all done. Yeah. <laughs> be all done, and everybody will have mountains of toilet paper and ice cream and potatoes. Yeah. Very strange. I don't know what drives people, but I guess in a panic situation, you grab anything you can. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I've got big freezers, and I'm not going to fill them with frozen foods and mm. pizzas and toast sticks and everything else. <laughs> so go, get in the kitchen with your family. If your husband's home or if your wife's home, you usually, don't usually cook together. Make it an event. Yeah. You know, have fun. That's what I always tell people. Have fun in the kitchen. Share it with your friends. Yep. Share it with your family. And this time especially, because you're going you're gonna to get really tired of watching TV. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. tired of looking at Facebook. So do some other things that maybe you don't do on a regular basis. Yeah. Cook together, play together, even a little snack like that. Yep. Make up a plate like that and take it in to watch TV. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just let's make sure we all stay together and stay focused and mm. take care of ourselves. <clears throat> Excuse me, my sinuses are draining. Mm. It's, not, it's not that. <laughs> and um, can we go on and start stuffing while we yeah. start wrapping things up yeah. here? All right. So put in some meat. And then I'll get you some Brussels sprouts. Maybe. OCD oh, he's so he's this. so tidy with these I things. Am. I just stuff stuff in there. <laughs> All, right. All right, some garbanzo beans and some Brussels sprouts. Do you want some shredded cheese? Yeah, a little bit of everything. And some tomato. That's what the fresh tomato is for. Mm -hmm. It's a very unusual combination, but boy, it sure smells good. Oh, Got tomato and the it. crunchy things. Yeah. So moving forward, I don't know when I'll be back. It'll depend on our crews oh. here, but. Um, we wanted to get something on the air today right away to give you guys an idea of some fun you can have. Yeah. Get out in the park. Get out on the trails. You know, you don't need a prefab recreation yeah. place to have fun. You want some crunchies? Yeah. I don't know. It's walnuts and figs, so. Yeah. But this, is, this is a good size sandwich now. It is. Easily a meal. Now, if you want, you could put some dressing mm. on it. We've got the yeah. honey mustard, the yep. French. Yep. Um, and these are more things that you just pulled right just out. Just pulled of out of the pantry. Yeah. I have a weird pantry, mm -hmm. and everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. so anyway, if you want to add some dressing to it, go mm -hmm. ahead, have a bite. Thanks for. I'm gonna he, now. He's gonna have a mouthful of food, and then I'm gonna say thanks for being here today. <laughs> but we want. I wanted to talk about River's involvement with the schools and such, and also his mouth is full. River is also, even though he doesn't live in Oxford, he's a volunteer at Canine now. Mm -hmm. And he's having a ball. You were out walking the puppies yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's going, that need is going to continue um, just because they're, they're changing their open hours. for. Mm -hmm. But adoptions are still available. They still need foster families, and they still need volunteers. So if you have, now you've got some time on your hands, give them a call and see. I mean, what better thing than to go up and walk puppies? Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. So how is it? Is it good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good deal. So until we all meet again, and I don't know when that'll be, unless I can maybe get a quarantine suit for Kyle and get him back in the studio. Um, <laughs> mask, you know, whole respirator, the whole thing. But that won't be necessary. But until then, I always say remember the promise. 
And that promise goes even further now because that's one thing people need to remember too. They are going crazy buying food, but people aren't buying for their pets. It's like they're overlooking that. And I've heard several people say, I completely forgot cat food. I completely forgot dog food. Or if you've got extra, take it up to canine because they can use it too. Yep. And just keep an eye on your community. Check on your neighbors. You know, smile and wave at people. Yeah. Maybe this is our opportunity to get a little friendlier, especially with the M24 project coming up soon. Mm. We need to practice patience and community oh, yeah. and kindness because yeah. it's going to get so much worse before it Agreed. gets better. Mm. And then, oh, you know what I forgot? I had some bacon for you, too. You can stuff oh, some bacon in there. There you go. Even more flavors. <laughs> And these and are bacon goes good with anything. Well, of course. So you could throw it on there. You could throw it on your Raspberries. sandwich. You could throw it on. Oh yeah. <laughs> Stick it wherever you want. Oh yeah. Let's and now Kyle always says plating is everything. So have a little bit dripped on the side. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Make it look cinematic. <laughs> well, it doesn't really show up on a red plate. Yeah. But, and we're kind of. We're doing our best in the studio. We're kind of tiny you know? here in the studio. Yeah. yeah Small put some space, but. It works. And we're putting the work in. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah. We got a little dessert, and again, I, I said you could feed a family of four or five, maybe six, for under $10, oh. and look what we still have left over. Yeah. So yep. it's all good. Something else to think about these days. Mm. And like you said, by the time we get to the end, we're going to be a lot better at a lot of things. Yeah, and that's what it is, experimenting, Budgeting. which is a lot of cooking. <laughs> Budgeting, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So until next time, this was episode 78. Mm -hmm. We'll be back sometime for 79 and then mm -hmm. number 80 will be at the township with my darling husband mm -hmm. so um, until then mm -hmm. be well <laughs> oh yeah thank you for being here this was I fun i enjoyed it very much good well we're gonna make more for the rest of the crew so we'll see you soon We here at OCTV cover the local events and government meetings of Oxford, Addison, and Leonard. We also produce and edit programs for you viewers out there. With the leadership of our station manager, Bill Service, we have been a very successful team winning awards from the state of Michigan for best electronic media, giving attention to our local veterans. We also won awards for excellence in directing and educational programs. With the help of our great new equipment and our technical directors, we write, produce, and broadcast our local news for you. Without our production manager, Terry Stiles, our channel and station wouldn't be the well-oiled machine it is today. She coordinates the editing assignments and shoot schedule with our editors and camera people. OCTV and its communities make a great team.